The United States under Biden is facing multiple crises on many fronts. And it's almost as if we, you know, lurch from one crisis to the next. So it's the crisis of the border. People are just flooding in. Uh, we could take well over a million illegals, but uh, it's we're using the term illegal. Biden is inviting them. He's letting them in. He's giving them notices to appear. Ha 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 ha. That's the border crisis. And then you have um, the energy crisis and the inflation crisis. And of course, the Afghan crisis, which I've been focused on. Um, but um, and then Biden, once he creates the crisis, blocks the Keystone Pipeline, prints all this money, creating an inflationary uh, impact. Prices start to rise. Obviously, part of that is going to be gas prices start to rise. As gas prices start to rise and, and fuel prices start to rise, that makes the prices of lots of other things that are dependent on fuel start to rise. The price of lumber starts to rise. The price of food, which is transported by fuel, starts to rise. So Biden's realized hey, this is actually, you know, starting to pinch people in the wall in a serious way. So let me try to do something about it. And in typical form, just as in Afghanistan, it's one sort of, you know, a kind of rhetorical cloud after another. Uh, Biden's now, the latest, this is coming from Jake Sullivan, is I'm calling on OPEC to increase its production of oil. Thus, obviously, with more supply, this would drive the price down. The demand is constant, the supply is more. But think about it, the United States doesn't belong to OPEC. OPEC is a cartel. This is, by the way, a cartel that was started uh, in the 1970s. It's um, uh, 13 countries, including Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and of course, there are some a bunch of other countries that also belong now. Russia, Malaysia, and Mexico have part of the sort of extended so-called OPEC plus. So OPEC takes this request under consideration and they go, well, no. We don't think there's any need to produce any more oil. Uh, it's not our job to basically fix the U.S. economy. If you're having problems, you're on your own, pal. So you can see the ineffectiveness, the kind of sheer fecklessness, the pathetic nature of this Biden pleading, plead with the Taliban, plead with OPEC. Now, what makes all of this so disgraceful and disgusting is the United States has oil. The United States has huge deposits of natural gas. Uh, Governor Greg Abbott uh, tweeted back at Biden, uh, and he basically says, hey, listen, uh, Texas can do this. That's a quote. He goes, quote, our producers can easily produce that oil if your administration will just stay out of the way. So here's the Biden administration actively blocking oil leases, actively blocking oil production in the United States, thwarting a pipeline. By the way, while approving at the same time the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which is a pipeline from Russia to Germany. So strengthening our, our adversary, Russia, strengthening, you, we're not strengthening our ally, Germany. We're making our ally, Germany, more dependent on Russia and consequently less dependent on us. We're doing all these bad things together. And then when, we, when they have consequences, oil prices go up, we plead unsuccessfully, as it turns out, with OPEC. Hey, guys, we want you to make some more oil. And OPEC basically goes... Nah, we don't think we're going to do it. So this is what we have what we have at the helm of the U.S. government. In a way, the feebleness of Biden, this stumbling man who doesn't know where he is, his wife has to point, there's the microphone, the secret, there's the road, don't walk among the plants, you might trip. Um, this is now America. Bi Biden's bungling, fumbling incoherence is now a model for U.S. policy.